On the show tonight, we try to get in touch with the other side with Michelle Collins. <laughs> As you have never seen them before. Anyway, on with the show. Right, my first guest has had a dose of sunburn and she is still very appealing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Collins. Why? Going down those stairs. <laughs> Here we are, glass of champagne for oh, you. Thank you. Is that all right? I don't know if I'll drink it though. How do you drink? I'll save it for after. No, oh. I know how to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> now I, uh, I've been doing my research. I've read your autobiography, and um... <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's a bit wordy. <laughs> Uh, started off with the yard bark, and of course you end up in the zoo. But you know, I've got to say, there's not enough sex in it because you only mentioned it once. And... I wish. Just a minute! How stupid am I, Michelle? This isn't your autobiography. See, now you wouldn't have done that when you were doing interviews live on the world. <laughs> One of the worst jobs of my entire life. Why? I think. Um. It's actually hard to do what you do, I think. Well, can I have that in writing? And you... <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got to be hugely confident, Brian, and have a huge ego. Which... <laughs> shut, shut it! Shut it! I'll tell you what, I'll give you all that. You could knock me down with one word. Yes. Um, so, I don't know, I wasn't really sort of ready for it, and I, I was just sort of flung in at the deep end, really. Yeah. They said, this is my first job, you're going to be interviewing somebody who's sort of fairly famous. And I was like, OK, and it's Sting, and I was like, oh, my God. So I said, um, so, Sting, what was the first thing you learnt to play on? And he <laughs> said... <laughs> and he said, well, Michelle, it was the linoleum. <laughs> so I thought, linoleum, mandolin. Being very nervous and obviously he's very stupid, said, um, oh, what's, what's that then? I've never heard of that. How do you play that? And he said, no, that. <laughs> and I said, what? And he said, the lino, the linoleum. <laughs> but in my house, we never had linoleum, we had lino. Oh. <laughs> do you play any instruments? Um, I did play the cello huh? for seven years and the trumpet, but I left the trumpet on the number 43 bus. Oh. <laughs> so I gave that up. Well, I don't want to put you out here, but you know Dave can actually play the trumpet and the cello. Can yeah, he? There he is. <laughs> now, you're just about to uh, commit bigamy. Is this true? Yes, I have, actually. Um, in fact, it's on a Monday night. This is perfect. I saw it. And I know I say it's perfect because it is perfect, and that's the name of it. Um, yes, it's a, it's a two-parter, and it's about um, a serial bigamist. Um, a girl who is addicted to weddings, especially her own, and, um, but not divorce. Mm. Lots of lo lo lovely husbands. I have mm. eight. <laughs> Do you? Well, four actually on screen and four off screen. One for each day of the week, in fact, I suppose. No, 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 Even if it's just for the ironing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, it was great. So, do you remember your first screen kiss? My first screen kiss? Yeah. Was <laughs> someone, no. in, someone in EastEnders? No. Oh. Val Dunican. Oh, what? Well. Because <laughs> when you were a little girl, you used to kiss. But I was this side, I did, yes. You used to kiss the screen at Val Dunican. I did. So, you had a bit of a crush on it? I did. Actually, Val Dunican and the Tremolos. Really? <laughs> yes. But as well as being an actress, you are an ambassador for Oxfam. Yeah. I didn't even know it was a country. <laughs> Tell us about your work, You are funny, aren't you? Oh, I'll pay for it. Be right <laughs> for him, he's sitting here like... <laughs> but you do have a history of helping other people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm fortunate than yourself, like, you know, Ian uh... Bill. <laughs> See, I knew, I knew something. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. So, come on. Tell us about EastEnders, then, your time on it. I mean, how long Can was you in it for? Can I have a bit now? Yeah, go on. Right. See, as soon as we get to EastEnders, yeah, guys, I mean, all right. <laughs> yeah, cut it all away. Can I put my feet up now, then? Yeah, of course, cool, <laughs> no worry. Um, 
about your senders? What do you want oh, to ask me, Brian? Well, did you enjoy working on it, you know? Um, yeah, I, I did. I mean, big, uh, EastEnders was a big part of my life, you know, ten, ten years, and I suppose I, I sort of, I grew up there, really, mm. and um, had lots of boyfriends and husbands. And, <laughs> um, no, met some great people. I mean, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for EastEnders, yeah. you know, I know that. I'm not, I'm not silly enough to, um, you know, to know that, really, and I appreciate my time there. Now, Sydney, uh, she died in childbirth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, d I wasn't there. I was, <laughs> I was in Cyprus at the time, sunning myself, doing sunburn. Yeah. But I sort of heard through the grapevine that I was being buried that day, I think. Where did that it feel? Was, <laughs> um, I suppose I was a bit surprised. So you didn't it, do a death scene? No. I suppose I, I would always like, to, always like to have had a death scene. Do you know, I had I've a death scene. I've never died on screen. Have, have, yeah, I had a death scene. In the Grimlis? No. <laughs> it wasn't the Grimlis. <laughs> It was last year on this show. <laughs> Barclays Bank are thinking of changing their name to Bonsai Bank because they've cut out all the little branches. <laughs> Frank Dobson has unveiled his new London Mayor campaign. It just says, help! <laughs> Uh, Hollywood News, they're uh, currently making a remake of Charlie's Angels. The original girls said they're too old to be in it. Uh, they're still angels, but uh, time has taken its toll on their Charlies. <laughs> uh, uh, well, well, welcome to the show. <laughs> Do you believe... Do you believe in reincarnation? Because I know you're very interested in that. Yes, I, I do. I believe there, um, there's something in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. I don't believe this is it. It's all my mum's fault, because I, I, I used to be a bit obsessed with sort of clairvoyance and psychics, and she did start it off. She's actually a very clever woman, but she bought me an Ouija board for Christmas, thinking that it was like Monopoly or something. When I, but I was 10 at the time. I was 10 years old. And yeah. sort of, when she came home, didn't understand why we're all sitting around with a glass going, is there anybody there? <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever had your tarot cards read? Lots of times. Yeah? I do it a bit myself as well. Do you really? Mm. Ooh, well... I might do yours later, Brian. Uh... <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If you're... I'm going to do yours now. <coughs> oh. OK. Ooh. <laughs> now, first card. Ooh, death card. Ooh. That's a good card, though. Is it, is it really? Yes. Ooh, another good one. Ooh! It's... Snap. <laughs> no, I'm into fun. Here, we get serious now with my tarot cards. <laughs> I see a tall, dark stranger. A military man. Yes. Colonel Mustard. <laughs> <laughs> I see a journey. A journey by train. <laughs> and I see a journey back. Go back three spaces. <laughs> and this is very bad. You're going to have problems with your waterworks. Not to worry, because it's something to do with your uh, lead piping. <laughs> but this is good news. Yes, you're going to win second prize in a beauty competition to collect £10. <laughs> and finally, Michelle, you're a star. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Collins!